coffee, so, cinnamon, coffee bean, coffee cinnamon, bean spice. cinnamon spice extract. If you're following along in our book, it's on page 95. Um, this is a fairly simple um, extract. What I love about it, there's only four ingredients and it only takes three months to finish it. Uh, in comparison to some of our vanilla extracts that can take 12, even maybe 18 months, this can be done in three months. And so once this is done, you can start using this in what, June? Right. Is that where we're at now? Yeah, it'll be ready really, really quickly. Uh, the thing that uh, takes the longest to extract always is vanilla beans. And so a lot of these extracts have vanilla beans for accents, and but but this one is coffee and cinnamon forward mm -hmm. and so anything that is sort of fruit and spice forward takes a lot less time to make it's the yep. vanilla that takes a long 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 time yep okay so let's get started um first thing we're going to start with is the yeah. vanilla beans this recipe calls for two to three indonesian these are our papa indonesian beans um they have a nice um dark earthy um flavor to them and most of the time, they're a little bit bigger. Um, this is the Planifolia species. And so that a lot of times they're bigger than our Tahi tensis species that is a little bit smaller. They are. And um, so these are, uh, like Jill said, they're Planifolia beans. Uh, for the new people that are watching for the first time, there's three really big species of vanilla beans. Planifolia is the most popular. Tahi tensis is probably the second most popular. And they're very like fruity. Uh, Pomponas, like those huge ones that you'll see from like Peru and sometimes short and fat ones in Mexico that are also pompona. Those are sort of the three big ones. The planifolia typically in the Indonesian region are gonna air on like that mocha, dark, earthy taste. So we think it's perfect for a cinnamon, um, like coffee, coffee spice extract. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of other ones that you could try. And then the other is you'll notice we're only doing three vanilla beans yep. instead of like an ounce. So in every extract recipe, we always say weigh them, don't count them. Um, because uh, when you're making vanilla extract, that's by weight. In the case of this recipe, we're just taking a handful of beans because we want the vanilla to be in there like a binder. Mm -hmm. It's just a soft binder. We think vanilla sort of pulls the ingredients together and it makes the coffee a little creamier. It makes the cinnamon a little creamier. So they're not there to make like a vanilla extract. They're there to just add a vanilla hint. Yes, kind of like salt, right? We add a little salt to everything. That's how I see vanilla. Vanilla is like salt to me. I add it to everything. A little sprinkle. <laughs> yep. There you go. Okay, so I'm just going to slice it down the middle to open this up. I do like all the caviar in there, um, especially since it's only going to be in here for three months. I um, want to get everything I can get out of these beans in the shortest amount of time. So I am going to Slice I'm them down slice the middle, them and then I'm just going to cut them in threes. I want to make sure that they fit nicely at the bottom of my jar. And if they're a little bit bigger, I might even cut them in fours just to get those little curlies too. And so um, just to kind of expand on why we're cutting for some of the new people, there's a lot of discussion out there of do you slice your beans open or do you leave them whole and what are the pros and cons? All of the vanilla taste comes out of the pod of the vanilla bean. Very little comes from the seeds. We call it the caviar that's on the inside. And so we, what we're trying to do when you slice it open is you're getting more surface area contact of the alcohol with the pod. And the pod is what holds that wonderful oil. It's called vanillin. And the vanillin is sort of the sweetness that comes out that we're trying to get into the extract. So there's um, a, a lot of discussion online on what's better and why and features and who, what should you do. We, we think that there is some science that supports cutting them open, get the alcohol on the inside and out. It'll help it extract just a little bit faster than if they're whole. Um, and uh, But it, the downside is that the caviar will spill out. Now, I say it's the downside. Some people, like we like it. We love seeing little speckles in our extract, but others may not want caviar. So if you don't want the caviar, leave the bean whole, tie it in a knot, put it in. Or you can always strain it out at the end. Or you, you can strain it out at the end. The little specks in there. Yep. So, okay, so now we have our three Indonesian papa beans here in the bottom of the jar. The next ingredient is our Ceylon cinnamon. This is a little bit different than the cinnamon that you're gonna find in the store. Um, most of the cinnamon that you find in the store is Saigon cinnamon, and it has just one thick quill here, and they're really quite stiff and hard to break. Um, and that flavor of the Saigon is a little bit more spicy and, uh, earthy. Hot, hot, and hot. spicy. Yeah. So it's a great cinnamon. Um, you know, it, it, it's not like one is better than the other, 
Well, even as I say that, I think everyone, that if you translate the name Cylon, it actually means true cinnamon. So, so if we're talking to the farmers in Sri Lanka that grow Cylon cinnamon, they'll say, no, there is a difference and Cylon's better. Yes. But the reason that there's two primary uh, versions is the, the Saigon cinnamon or the Cassia cinnamon. Uh, it's a very thick bark and it's really hard to break and it's super hot and spicy. Whereas the Cylon cinnamon that we're showing here, Ceylon, depending on how you pronounce it, all those little um, loops that you see in there, those are pieces of tree bark. And they actually cut the bark with a knife and then they roll it up. And it's such a fine bark that you can cut all these little quells and they're all wrapped up tightly in there and they break really easily, even so though there's many of them. Yeah. And when you break them, it releases the aroma. And instead of hot and spicy, you still get, of course, the cinnamon taste, yes. but they're sort of like the soft, fruity undertone it's, that it's a little milder. It's a little milder, yes. but it makes Ceylon cinnamon, um, you know, really kind of a special, not your usual cinnamon experience. Yes. And and if you want to use the other in this recipe, it works well. Easier to find. You're welcome to do that. It'll be great. Yep. So what I'm going to do with this cinnamon here, I do want you to see all these different like like layers in here. The little it's quells. Just so different than regular cinnamon. And like Paul said. You know, it, I can smell a little bit of vanilla right now, but when I break this in half, look how easy that was. I hardly had any pressure there and I broke it in half and you can see now all of those different um, levels in there or um, layers. It smells so much stronger now that I've that broken it in half. I, it's just filling the whole room now. Yeah, I couldn't smell it when you were holding it. Now that she broke it, like the smells come over here. And so it just releases all of the aroma of uh -huh. what the Ceylon is. So there's something really special in, in our opinion about Ceylon cinnamon. But again, all of them work. I, I also need to say, um, you see how like those little wraps are? When you put them in, they'll sort of unfold. And then when you take them out to dry them, they'll fold up again. And someone posted a picture in our Facebook group, uh, the Making Vanilla Extract by Vanilla Pura. If, if you're not a member, you should go over and join. There's like 108,000 people there. And all we talk about is extract making 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's, <laughs> it's a party. Yeah, it is. It is. And um, anyway, someone removed their cinnamon and it's like the quells had opened up while it was in the extract. And then when they took it out, somehow they missed it, but the quells then had dried and they wrapped up uh, a vanilla bean. So then as they were trying to like grind the cinnamon after they dried it to make powder, they ran into like a whole vanilla bean that the cinnamon had wrapped around somehow when it was dry. I don't know how that happened, but I've never seen that before. So check inside your cinnamon. You might have a hidden vanilla bean yeah. when you take it out. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay, so the next step here is we're just gonna put the cinnamon in here. Part of breaking it is to get those um, flavors and spices going inside the extract, like we said. You can smell it when you crack them in half. And then also, um, everything needs to be submerged. Once you add your alcohol, um, everything needs to be submerged or nothing's gonna extract out of those ingredients. And so you, um, you want it small enough um, so everything can be sub submerged. Yep, really okay. important. If it's not submerged, um, there's, there's always a couple of things that people will talk about. One, they'll say it's not submerged. Is it going to grow mold or something? I've, I've never seen that. I've never seen, you know, mold grow like above the alcohol line. Um, so that hasn't really been a problem in our experience. But the point of if it's not submerged, it's not extracting. And so that's the reason that you want to make sure you're getting as much of it underneath the um, alcohol level as you can be. If it's not submerged, it's not extracting. So you want everything underneath that level. Yep. There you go. Okay. Um, and and um, so the next thing we have here is our medium roast coffee beans. Um, the recipe calls for medium roast. It, it's a milder flavor. If you like dark roast coffee, um, try it if that's your favorite. Um, I noticed I've made it with both and the dark roast is a little bit more forward of coffee kind of drowns out the cinnamon and vanilla a little bit more. So I have found that medium roast works best um, if you want to get all those flavors in there. Um, also brand wise, I don't, I don't have a specific brand for you. I get my coffee locally here. Um, I have a, a couple coffee shops here locally, Alpha Coffee that's just at the bottom of the Cottonwood Canyons here. Um, it's owned by a veteran, also a woman. We love um, supporting our um, local community and small businesses. 
So, um, you know, we try and um, support them, especially with my coffee problem. I have a coffee problem, too. (laughs) (laughs) And then also in Draper, we have um, Alpha Coffee, and they are fabulous also. So if you have a local coffee shop that you like, um, go in and get your beans there. Um, Or if you have one at the store that you like, go on, go ahead and, 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 you know, share um, what your favorite coffee is. We'd love to hear. But that's like what we said is we we help you make the recipe all your own. So if you're a dark roast person, can you use dark roast? If, yes. If you love dark roast coffee in the morning, then can you use dark roast? Yep. Of course. Light roast, can you use light roast? Of course. Like what whatever your coffee is, you should use it in this extract yes. because no two extracts are the same at the end of the day, right? Mm-hmm. Make it all your own. Yep. Okay. So this is one cup of uh, medium roast um, coffee. And I went ahead and cracked some of them ahead of time just to save on time. But I want you to see with my mortar and pestle here, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm going to break some of them. I'm not going to ground it down like I do, you know, like coffee. I'm just the same thing as with the cinnamon. I just want to get things activated, get things going, open up these beans. There's oil on the outside and the inside. I've made it where I haven't cracked the beans before, um, and it's fine. But I have noticed that if I do crack the beans, there's a little bit more of a coffee flavor. So if you don't have anything to crack them or you just don't want to, it'll be fine. Um, But if you can crack just a few of these, um, it will be a little bit more of a coffee flavor. And then I can't tell you how um, satisfying. And I don't even know why. <laughs> Put you down these and hearing that crackle, I mean, I don't know why that's satisfying, but it is. <laughs> when we're having one of those long days at work, I'll hear crackling in the background, and it's Jill over here. This is her stress relief. Cracking coffee beans. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to add this to just the rest here. And then I'm going to add it into my jar. Well, it's a little messy. I'm going to have to pick up those pieces. Okay. Hi, Jill. Just whilst you're doing that, um, a quick question for the moment. Connie asks if she were to use a dark roast, Um, Would you recommend using a little less beans so that they don't um, overpower the other flavors and notes? That's a great idea. You could use a little less bean and then also um, maybe add a little more cinnamon um, if you, uh, you know, want to make sure that uh, the coffee, you know, maybe too strong. But I think it really, again, depends on your preference as it relates to the coffee taste. If you're trying to really go coffee forward and you like a strong dark roast, then the point of using a dark roast coffee is you want to get more of that like powerful coffee taste forward. Um, And so the reason we're using a medium roast is we're trying to find a balance between the coffee, the cinnamon and the vanilla. We want all those flavors to kind of come through a little bit and you like medium roast. And so, I mean, just uh, frankly, it's that, that simple that we're using a medium roast because you like medium roast and it, it allows for those other flavors to come forward. Yep. Great question. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Connie. Okay, um, so we've got um, all of our ingredients in here, and now all we need to do is add the vodka. Yeah, let's um, very uh, quickly, let's kind of give a high-level spirit recap for um, you know the, the new members that are watching. Whenever you're um, talking about alcohol, there's three different big broad categories that we look at. All of them could work for this extract. Um, vodka, we like vodka is sort of our tasteless category. And that's why we're using it when we want the alcohol to simply work as an extractor and not, uh, add to the taste at all. Uh, typically we go with the vodka for that reason. So, and we'll talk about the vodka that we chose and why here in just a second. Um, the, the next category are rums, rums are sugar based. Um, some vodkas now are actually sugar based as well. Um, and so with the sugar base, you get a little bit more sweetness of the sugar that comes through. A white rum is virtually, it's kind of like a vodka uh, or a sugar-based vodka is like a white rum. So they're, they're kind of crossing over now. They're, they're going to be tasteless, but maybe with a hint of a little bit more sweetness and they can be really good. Then you get into like your dark rums. They're sweet, but they're smoky. Um, um, and so you're going to add smokiness to your extract. Now, in the case of a coffee bean cinnamon extract, 
a rum could be a great thing. Even a spiced rum could be a great thing. So those are all options that you have available. And then the last one is sort of that whiskey bourbon category. Um, super smoky. Uh, we like bourbon because it's all bourbons are 51% corn based, which means they err on the side of sweetness. There's some whiskeys that are still good as well, um, but they're smoky. They take a little longer to extract. But if you like the taste of whiskey and or bourbon and you think that that would marry well with the coffee beans that you're working with, those could be explored too. Yeah. But we chose vodka in this case because we want the coffee, the cinnamon, the vanilla. Again, our whole point is we're trying to find sort of a delicate mixture of coffee, cinnamon, vanilla, and we want it all to be presented. Yeah. We want the story to be all three of those things in harmony, yes. not not to have just a powerful coffee or a powerful bourbon. We we want them all to kind of present themselves. Yes. Right. That's the plan. Did I say that well? You did. Was that Love a good that. summary? How about yes. that? <laughs> OK, so the vodka that we chose is Wheatley Vodka. And this actually comes from the same distiller as Buffalo Trace Bourbon. Um, and um, it, it it's a pretty good vodka. It's middle of the shelf. It's not too expensive. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a good vodka. We have a list on our website, the top 10 vodkas to use in your extract. This actually is number 11, but I don't know for how long it changes a lot, depending on what, what we're all using, what we're all learning. So, um, check with us every so often and you'll see, um, what, what's happening and, and what vodkas are the top 10 or top 11. Yes. Th those of you that follow me and us, uh, well, you'll know that it's hard for us to stay confined to just one list of like three things <laughs> or 10 things. So it's, I'm just laughing because we have a top 10 list and this is number 11 because it's so good. We had to put it on the list, but we kept the others. So like Jill said, we're constantly trying new spirits. And so we have a top 10 bourbon list and a top 10 rum list and a top 10 whiskey list and a top 10 vodka list and then a top 10 overall alcohol list. And as you're looking at those lists, they change constantly. In fact, we have a new bourbon coming in that is aged in a vanilla extract barrel. And we, we're not ready to present it yet because we haven't even tried it yet. It's coming in. But as an example, if that one hits the mark that, that we think that it will, then that one might jump up on the list. So check those lists often. They will change. Right now, Wheatley's made its way up. A lot of people like it, use it. We've liked it. The price is great. So it's number 11. It might be number nine in the future. But yeah. right now, it's it's sitting on the number 11 spot because it's a great whiskey at a great price. Excuse me. It's a great vodka at a great price from Buffalo Trace, which is like one of the oldest distillers in the country. Yes. So they know what they're doing. They do know what they're doing. And if all of that talk has gotten you a little bit more confused, <laughs> because you don't live at the liquor store like, and you're new, exactly. <laughs> um, vodka is a really nice place to start. And then also, if you have our book, it explains what all the different alcohols are. So you can just read through it when you want in your own time, because it can be overwhelming. So, but a nice place to start is always vodka. There you go. Taste it. So well said. <laughs> Good summary. So we've measured it? We've measured it. it I have eight ounces of um, vodka. And I've got my little specks in here because those are for my coffee beans. I use the same thing. So don't worry. That's not, you know, something else there that I'm adding into this a little, right? So we're adding it all in, pouring it over the top, and what can we expect? We'll see uh, well, with the coffee beans and everything this else. This is what's interesting, and I hope you can see this. I'm going to take the funnel out. Um, what happens when you put the, the vodka in? And I don't know. Did Can you get this? It looks like um, the, the coffee beans on top are not being um, ex extracted because they're just sitting on the top. And what happens is is um, they haven't been, um, the, the alcohol hasn't been absorbed into the beans yet. So they will float, give it a day, maybe two, and they will sink to the bottom. So what I usually do is if I had my lid. Oh, did there. we lose the lid? We've lost the lid. Oh, anyways. It's okay. Maybe so just put what, your hand over the top. No, what I do is, what I'll do is I'll just shake it here. I'll steal this guy's there lid. There you go. So I'll just, oh no, he's no, that's a different that's one, a different bottle. Yeah. Anyways, so what you'll do is you've got all your ingredients here. Now you've got eight ounces of vodka in here. Um, shake it up. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to label it. And I always, um, 
start off with putting the date that I started it on the bottom. And I'd show you that if I could find the lid. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put the title of title of it on here. Now, I use masking tape while I'm in the process because these change out. Um, and I hate stickers. And I don't want to have to deal with that. So it, until it's finished, I just leave on my masking tape here. And so I've got coffee bean, cinnamon, spice. I put the page number so if I have questions, I can just go to it really quickly. And then I know that I have to change it out um, in two months on the 16th of June. Um, after I change it out in two months, I'm going to take out the coffee beans and I'm going to take out the cinnamon. And then I'm going to I'm going to leave the vanilla in there for another month. And then after a total of three months, you should be good to go. You can use this extract. And and what kinds of things, um, you know, are you, would you use this in? I mean, when I think about it, I think um, chocolate, like all my brownies. I love, love adding um, coffee flavor to um, chocolate. It just. Well, and in your morning cup of coffee, right? Oh, sure. Right. Yes. But while we're thinking about that, um, I, one thing I want to show them, just because it, it's hard to see if you're looking at the top. What has happened is I'm going to tilt it. I'm going to put my hand over it. You can see there's about an inch on the bottom. I'm trying not to spill any, but there's about an inch on the bottom where the fluid is down there and everything has floated, right? And so there's a couple of things, and even as I tip it, you can see. So there's a couple of things we can do. One, you can grab your tweezers or your uh, muddler, and you can push it down just to make sure. But again, it's all going to sink over time. That's, yeah, that's what we see, right? You can push it all down, but because, again, the coffee beans haven't absorbed the alcohol, they, they will float. And so what I have found is I don't even really bother pushing it down. I'll put the lid on, shake it up, and then I'll put it away, and I'll go in and check on it. I've got one here that I did a month ago. I've got my date on the, on the bottom. And if you look at it, it's all – all the beans are down – all the way to the bottom, but guess what popped up? My cinnamon that was on the very bottom popped up because it's lighter than the beans now. Right. And so checking in on it is helpful because you may have to push down the cinnamon. And if you can't push down the cinnamon because the beans are so packed now below it, I just take them out and then I'm just gonna crack it one more time stick it in there. I'll pull this guy out. Um, you know, or you can, um, you know, this was a, there was a hidden coffee bean in that one. <laughs> now the, the <laughs> long tweezers, was. the long tweezers are a really important tool that we use quite a bit for this reason. Mm -hmm. Um, but as, as we're looking and you see how we're kind of working, whenever you get into multi-ingredient extracts, it's important to work with a bottle that has a wide opening, right? Yeah. So we love, these are our French square bottles, uh, 16 ounce, um, they're, I think these are the 16. Um, there's plenty of room, easy to get the ingredients in and out of the bottle. A lot of people will use like the ball, uh, jars. Um, Those are helpful because you can also get uh, fermentation weights and you can just put it down on top and that way, um, you know, the pressure is coming down, keeping everything extracted. The thing go. I like about these French squares are is they just fit in my cupboard a little bit easier. They take less space than um, the canning ball jars. And so, um, but when you're using multi-ingredients, it getting things in and out and submerged, sometimes it's just easier to go with a canning jar. And then when all of those ingredients come out and your extract is finished, you can put them in smaller jars and then that they can store uh, easier in your cupboards and, and yeah. drawers. And so, and then when the extracts are done, then we get into like the real decorative jars. If you're going to gift the extract to someone, there's decorative jars we use, just useful jars. Like our kitchen jars are really kind of boring looking, but they're functional, right? Like we like those kind of eight and a half ounce square ones with just the twist cap, or we can put the plug in it and the pouring spout makes it really easy to, uh, to use. But that's, that's the idea. Now, what we were saying uh, to those of you joining us for the first time, uh, we're going to, in two months, we're going to come back together. We're going to have another workshop similar to what we're going to be doing here with the bananas and the oranges. We're going to change those recipes or those ingredients out two months from now to show everyone how that works. But if you're following along, if you've got the book, the instructions are in the book. In two months, you're going to take out the coffee beans. You're going to take out the cinnamon. 
you're going to taste test it. If you like the taste, you're done. Yeah. You're ready to go. Just like that. If you want it to be more vanilla forward, then leave those vanilla beans in there and let it extract for a little bit longer. If you're not getting enough cinnamon and you like a lot more spice, feel free to add a fresh cinnamon stick and let it go for another month. If you want to let it go for another month, um, go ahead. But again, you only have three beans in here. So if you're expecting exactly. it to taste like vanilla extract with hints of coffee, and cinnamon, you're not going to get that um, because there's only three beans in there. If you want it to be, you know, put a whole ounce of beans in there so it'll be more of a vanilla extract and have it go 12 months, you can do that too. But for this recipe, it's coffee cinnamon forward with a vanilla uh, binding uh, accent to it. Yep. And so that's it. That is our uh, coffee bean cinnamon spice extract step one. We've just made it. It's obviously it's one that we use because this one's only a month old um, that we just made because we knew we'd be making this. But we went ahead and made this one a month ago just because we need more. And it's coffee cakes. It's brownies. It's chocolate. Really anything chocolate that we're making in our home. We add coffee extract because that coffee with chocolate brings out like that dark chocolate taste like in, in a way that's really, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. We, we well, choose it over just regular vanilla extract for our chocolate products. And then also um, when I give things to the neighbors or family, I always like to include like a little two ounce jar of something very unique. And so I will, if I give a gift of like coffee and stuff, I'll put my little tiny little extract uh, in there. And it's just, it's just something that's homey and personal and um, you know, it comes for me. Yeah. So, you know, it's just fun. And we have a little pressure in the neighborhood and with family. When we give anything, there always has to be extract with it. And there's got to be new extracts and yeah, more they, extracts. Now they're like, well, this is just vanilla. And this like, is just vanilla. Just vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> really, nobody says that, right? Just vanilla. Oh, the friends that tease us sometimes because they have almost as many extracts as we do now. True.